Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Olympus XA3. Uh, it's from 1985. It's basically the same as the XA2. It's zone focus with a close focus of 1.2 meters. has a nice Zuiko lens, 35 millimeter, f3.5 to f14. It's four elements in four groups. And the program shutter goes from 2 seconds to 1 750th of a second. It's strictly programmed auto exposure, just like the XA2. The difference is one of the biggies. This one reads DX encoded film. And then if you're manually setting the film speed, this one goes to ISO 1600. The XA2 only went up to 800. That's one of the manually uh, set speeds. The DX encoding doesn't go up that high. And also on the bottom where you get the uh, battery check and the self timer slash foot, there's a setting right at the beginning for plus one and a half stops of exposure for backlight compensation. And I use some old film, so I use that a lot. It uses uh, two 1.5 volt batteries. I've got some cheap LR44s in here. They're fresh, and it seems to be working just fine. The focus zones here, the very bottom, is 1.2 to 1.8 meters. That's the kind of people. And then the two trees, 1.2 to 6.3 meters, and then the mountain is 6.3 meters to infinity. There's a warning light, I'll move it around a little bit, it's a little green light in the viewfinder that warns you if it's going to be a 30th of a second or slower. It's letting you know to use a flash or a tripod. This is the A11. Uh, it was first introduced with the XA, the rangefinder model of this, and it takes a single uh, AA battery. And it's kind of interesting. It's got that interface on the side of the camera, and when you move this switch on the body for the flash position, it pops it up, and then this is a ready light. Um, the only, there we go. So it's telling you the flash is charged up and ready. Um, there's a sensor on the front and an ASA speed setting, same as ISO. It only does 100 and 400, but then it's got a nice little range meter here on the back. And you can also set it to full power, so it's always just going to blast it. I think I use that mostly. With ISO 100 uh, film, the flash range is 2.5 meters, about 8 feet, and with 400 film, it's 5 meters, it's about 15 feet, somewhere around there. The A16 model is a little bit bigger physically and takes two AA batteries. It roughly doubles the power of this guy. For finer exposure, compensation. It's one of the trade-offs of DX encoded film. What you can do, because if your canister is unmarked, you still set it here with the dial on the front, or if it's out of the range that the camera can read. But one thing you can do, cover the contacts in here so that it doesn't think you have a DX encoded canister, and then you can still set your film speed here with the dial on the front. So DX encoding is a mixed blessing. You pop it in and go, but if you're using crummy film or weird film or shooting in odd circumstances where you need a little bit more exposure compensation than the plus one and a half steps, stops. Um, it's nice to be able to set that manually. That way you can go up or down rather than just adding exposure. And one of the reasons I needed to do that I'm still working through this expired PhotoWorks film. First roll I shot was this 400. It says it's made in Italy and used by 01 2006. So 
This sucker is really old. Made in Italy, maybe Ferrania, I don't know. What I did, I did the uh, cover up the DX encoding because these came out super, super thin. This thing lost a lot, a lot of speed. So I shot a roll of 200 and defeated it and used the manual film set. And sometimes I would set it to 200 and just uh, do a stop and a half exposure compensation. They came out about right. So I don't know how this stuff was stored, but it lost a lot of speed. This one is actually older. Says used by 07 2003, but it's made in Germany. So I, this is mystery. This is maybe Ferrania. But anyway, this stuff lost a lot of speed. My first roll, pretty useless. By the time you punch it up enough to get something from the thin negatives, um, it's really noisy and grainy and kind of funky. But the slower speed film where I did exposure compensation, it came out pretty nice. Uh, I know I say this every time, but I do still suck at estimating distances. But it's kind of a neat camera. The only one I haven't gotten my hands on so far is uh, is an XA4. It had some macro capabilities and a bit wider lens. So I'm going to hang on to this guy. I probably won't shoot with it again right away, but I'll see you then.